Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do dodging and burning in Photoshop using curves adjustment layers. I'm also uploading a couple of other videos that show you another couple of ways you can do dodging and burning with different techniques in Photoshop. Uh, but in this video, we're gonna do it with curves, uh, which is my favorite technique for doing this. I think it's the most flexible way of doing it and gives you the most control. So here goes. So I've got this image I shot of uh, the gentle giant Darth Talon bust. So we're just gonna work on this, uh, I haven't done any other treatment to this, so we're just gonna look at the dodging and burning for this. So the way you set this up is come down here on your layers panel, you're gonna wanna click here and add a curves adjustment layer. Now, first thing I'm gonna do, let's just move this up the top so we can work on uh, the layers panel at the same time and then this is gonna be my dodge layer. So this is what I'm gonna to use to uh, lighten areas of the image. So all I do is I click dead center in the curve here and just drag it up to about there. So you can see this is affecting the entire image. So this is gonna be kind of the brightest that I'm gonna let things get in this image. Uh, so that looks good. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill that adjustment layer. Uh, the mask with black, so it masks all that adjustment back out. And then what, we'll, what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint on top of that uh, adjustment layer mask and bring some of those uh, highlighted areas into the image. So to paint with black, you can see I've got black selected there. If I hit Shift F5, okay, then it takes it all down. So that curves adjustment layer is set up for me to do my dodging. I'll call that layer dodge. Then I'm gonna add another adjustment layer. Same thing again, curves. And now in the histogram, what I'm gonna do is take it down the other way. So I'm just gonna grab dead center, bring it down so things get darker. And so you can see that's how dark the burn areas are gonna get in the image. So again, click the mask there, shift F5. I'm gonna just fill that entire mask with black. So there's no effect yet. So that's gonna be my burn. Now the idea with setting it up this way is I can now do the burn and the dodge on separate layers independently and I can come back and tweak that curves layer if I need to, to reduce the effect or increase the effect of the dodging and burning. Now you could also do that just by raising or lowering the opacity of the uh, adjustment layer, but you know, you've got a couple of options with doing it this way. So then it's just a case of grabbing your pen, to, uh, your brush. Um, let's set the brush up. So what I like to do is start with a kind of fairly large brush size and go over kind of the bigger areas in the image to just bring up the bigger areas first or, or lower in the case of the burn. Uh, and then I go in and uh, make the brush size smaller and work on the smaller parts to bring out the detail. So this brush size looks about okay, 176 pixels. I might just increase it a bit. So I'm just using the left and right bracket keys on my keyboard to change the size of that. And then in terms of the opacity and flow, I always leave the opacity at 100%. And I'm gonna take the flow all the way down to four. Now I'm using a Wacom Intuos tablet to do my uh, painting with here with the brush. So it is gonna be pressure sensitive, so bear that in mind. You're gonna get different results if you do this with a mouse. Honestly, a Wacom Intuos tablet is probably the best investment you can make. So if you haven't got one, go grab one, uh, and then I just need to get the white brush to paint on this uh, mask area here. So I've got white selected, I've got the burn, I'm just gonna pick up my tablet here, and then all I'm gonna do is look for some of the darker areas that I just wanna accentuate with the burn layer. So if I just go here in this sort of a hip area where it's getting a bit darker, and I'll just uh, kind of do this a bit over the top so you can see the effect here. So I'm just gonna paint a little bit in there and you can see how much that's darkened it. So you can see in the layer mask, that's brought out that whole area and if I toggle that on and off, that's how it's applied that burn. Now obviously that's too much, so I'm just gonna undo that. Uh, other thing I wanna do is look at my brush. Yep, hardness is okay. 
So yeah, this is about okay to start with. So I probably would go over that area, but just a little bit more subtly. And this is what flow allows you to do. It just allows you to sort of um, bring these kind of effects up subtly without adding too much at a time. And normally I find I don't usually do much with burn. I, I normally do more with dodge. So with this image, based on what I'm looking at here, I probably wouldn't actually do much more with the burn. So then I can move on to the dodge layer. Just click on the layer mask there for the adjustment layer. And it's exactly the same thing. I just keep the brush white and then paint on the lighter areas to bring those out and accentuate them. So I can bring the face up, some of the back of this part here. You get the idea. I'm doing this very, very roughly, just so you can see the difference. And that's kind of how I do a kind of general overall treatment. So if I toggle the dodge on and off, you can see how that's brought up some of the highlight areas. So then what I do is I zoom in uh, for both the dodge and the burn and start doing some of the detail. So let's go up to say the face area here. Take the brush size down just with the left bracket again, and then start working on some of the detail. So I might bring out the nose area here, a little bit around the lips to bring those up. Usually work on the eyes just to make the eyes pop. And then it's just a case of following the highlights and bringing those up. And just going over the image and bringing out those details. See, we've got these reflected areas here, bring those up. I'd do the same with the burn. And that's pretty much the process. So I'll stop there. Let's just toggle that on and off. So this is with the dodge on, that's with it off. So it's subtle, but it just makes the image pop. So that's all there is to it. Now, as I said, you have got the ability to control this. So I can come back in the curves layer here, and if I want, I can manipulate that curve layer and push it up, bring it down. You can see what that's doing. It's only affecting the areas I've masked through, uh, which is really helpful. But more often than not, with dodge and burn, what I find is when I've finished, I usually just take a step back and lower the opacity to say 75, 80%. Because I tend to find when you do dodging and burning, when you're kind of doing it, you know, you're looking at the picture zoomed in and close up, and then when you back out and you've completed both the dodging and burning, you've probably done a little bit too much. So once I'm finished, I just grab the dodge and the burn layers independently and just back them off to about 80%. Then I find I, you know, haven't overdone it with the dodging and burning. So it's kind of a uh, keeps the image looking fairly natural. So that's all there is to it for this curves adjustment technique for dodging and burning. As I say, I've also uploaded another couple of videos that show a couple of different ways to do this. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to see those and plenty of other tutorials on how to do retouching here on Toy Shooter.